Okay. All right. No, I, I'll. I don't see any, anyone. I don't have video cams turned on for this meeting. Okay, that'll work. <clears throat> okay, so as you know, this is the login page for the learning management system. Um, I'm not going to get too much into the overall administration. We're just gonna solely focus on test administration and building assessments. And so to access that, you'll enter the um, admin area. And um, what we're going to be looking at are specifically assessments. And assessments are going to fall under the um, course umbrella within the learning management system. And um, for the, so the different types of courses we have are um, online course and it's going to be considered an online course and the type of online course will be an assessment course. So the first step uh, for building an assessment is we'll click add new online course and we can do that over here or we can do it over here from the drop down. So I'm going to choose online course and I'm going to call this uh, test assessment. So um, I don't know how much administration you've done within the courses, such as a curriculum, <clears throat> but you'll see that a lot of the options are the same. Um, for category, I'm gonna choose um, DGATC. And um, you don't have to select a thumbnail or select anything else on this page. Um, I just recommend choosing category. You don't even have to enter a description, just a title and the category. That's all that you need. The syllabus is where we're going to build the training content. And so to build the training content, we want to add learning object. So we'll click this button and it's going to ask us what type of learning object are we going to add? We're going to add an assessment. So we select assessment and click next. And then it's going to ask us to enter a name for the assessment. And so we'll call this test assessment exam. And um, I'm going to say I want uh, 75 to pass as the passing grade. Going to look at my options. And so we can allow multiple attempts for this um, exam. We can allow failure. Um, we can randomize the question order and say, I do want to do that. Randomize answer order, I'd like to do that. Am I going to show the answers? So um, show correct answer when a question has been answered. So if a user gets that wrong, we'll go ahead and show that. And this, these are just individual preferences. Um, you can set this up however you wish. Feedback will show if we have feedback entered for a question. And is this going to be timed? We'll say that we'll give users 30 minutes to complete this. And um, then single page layout, uh, this option will change the layout to be on a single page. If you have a lot of questions, <clears throat> then I recommend uh, breaking these into uh, different pages. And then messages. So an introduction message will say something to the effect of welcome to the test assessment. So these are just messages that will um, that will display depending on where the user is within the assessment. And then the questions, this is where we'll add the questions for the assessment. And in my experience, it's 
best to kind of lay these out in either a Word document or a spreadsheet um, where you'll have the question in the first column and then your distractors in the following columns. Um, that way you're not making all of this up on the fly. Um, and you'll have the information available where you can just copy and paste. That said, I do not have that resource available, so I'm just going to make these up on the fly. Um, this is going to ask me to create a group. Um, so I'm gonna call this uh, group one. And if there is a certain area of training that these questions would be specific to, so I know you're doing some um, instrumentation, so if there's any type of instrumentation such as um, measuring um, or any other type of group you wanted to create you could name this whatever you want and then you could create questions specific to that group within that group so do I have any questions so far uh, Dusty does this only apply to stuff that's within your scope or can this apply to any any question any any from anywhere this the sky is the limit whatever you want to create um, this does not have to pertain to any martech training it doesn't have to pertain to um, any type of technical training i mean this okay. can be something for example if you wanted to quiz new employees about their new hire workbook or or health program or whatever you wanted to create a test for this is um the tool you would use can we um can we copy and paste if i've got other questions from other uh places can i copy it and paste it certainly you can do whatever you want in this this is all up to you great answer yeah <laughs> um we're not going to limit or police the content you put in these so if you wanted to poll questions and answers directly from our exams, then you know that's certainly up to you. Now, um, did you, you said, you used the term, did you say pull, P-U-L-L, or poll, P-O-L-L? Pull, like copy or pull okay. if you wanted to use, use the exam questions. Um, and if you did want to use some of our, our questions, I could give you a PDF document that you could use um if you just let me know what um course you would like the test for okay good 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 so um so we haven't created a question yet yeah so i'm going to go ahead and create some questions here i'm going to click the create question button and first question we'll say um say what color is the sky and this is multiple choice single answers, so there's only going to be one response, correct response for this. So I'm gonna say blue here and add another response, green, red, purple. And this is where, um, if you remember, there was a feedback that um, was an option. So if we had feedback selected, then we could write the feedback here. And say if I get an incorrect response, we can say something to the effect of, sorry, that's not correct. Or we could just copy the, um, the same thing as the correct reply. And we're going to give this, um, so one, one weight, let's say if we had a, um, if we have more questions that were more important, we could give them a heavier weight. So if the user got that, um, that question incorrect, then um, it would skew the score of the exam a little bit more in the negative direction if they got it incorrect. Um, I'll create another question. I'll 
I'll say, where am I working now? And um, this could be, we'll have a multiple answer. So we can say home. Um, we can say um, Texas, Houston. So all of these are going to be correct responses. We'll add another response. Um, and that won't be correct. And if we decide we want to start another group, we can uh, go ahead and create another group. And then go ahead and add more questions. Dusty. Yes. Does it uh, allow fill in the blank questions and answers? Yes, you can select text. Um, so for this response, how many states are in the U.S.? I'm going to put 50 and I'm going to add another option and I'm going to um, number that or write that out as 50. So both of those responses would be considered correct. Um, if I want to add another question, let's say I wanted to um, create a true-false question. Um, and I have this as text and actually I'd have this as multiple choice single answer, how this is true, how this is false. And, okay. and then I have, um, the false answer as the correct answer. Cool. And so whenever I'm finished with everything, I click add object, and that's going to add the assessment to my uh, syllabus for the course. So this is the training content. And um, so setting the availability, Actually, before I move forward, do I have any other questions about um, creating the assessment? You can go back and edit if you hit the little uh, pencil icon. So all you've done is just two questions there. <clears throat> and if you did uh, 50 questions, all 50 would be shown on that one screen? I have, um, I have two groups of two questions. So okay. Two questions in this group and two questions in this group. Okay. And I can even, I believe I can even drag this up to here if I wanted. So you can re you can organize questions. Hmm. Okay. No, this is, this is good. Do you address polling? Polling? Um, do you mean like a survey? Um, Daniel, let's make sure I'm using the right terms, damn it. Um, where you've got, um, maybe you're doing this to a group and you're doing it online and you have that up being shown and you mm. say, okay, um, how many people think, uh, you know, how many states are in the, the United States? And, um, you get people to answer based from a uh, or from an app. So there, you've you've asked the question, and then you get the poll back electronically. I kind no, of see what we, you, we don't yeah. do anything like that. Um, this is a course that would be assigned, and then once the user completes the course or completes um, completes in this case the assessment, there is an assessment report where you could see what the responses were. I'm, Dan, I'm talking about the stuff that uh, NTI has. Yeah, I'm, I'm 
picking up what you're laying down there, Patrick. And there's an interesting uh, use for that, possibly, for this with the CEUs. Right. But, That's yeah. what I'm leading up to. Yeah. I'm not sure if we could quite do that in real time, but it would be something to investigate. So, well, the, sorry. Invest, the, the resource is on the phone with us, isn't he? <laughs> well, <laughs> and yeah, because we could assign... During a class, during an eight-hour class, we assign one of the tests, an exam, to the CEU group. Now, and this is a question I'll have for Dusty later, if we're just doing assessments, how much does it cost to put somebody into the MarTech Media program to do just an assessment, no courses? Because that's where we run into the problem is, each one of those people has to be loaded into this program as a user to be able to take the assessment. They have to have a uh, login and everything. Yeah, let me um, let me see if I can find out. But that's later on. That's a financial well, question, so we can. I don't I don't let me test. don't let me slow it down. No, that's what I'm saying. We can go on with how we create this test. And we can find out what it would take to get people in there for CEUs later, because that's just a matter of cost. Yeah, we can um, we can certainly figure that out. And if it's a user that's just going to be taking assessments, then we can kind of enroll them into a specific department where they will not have access to the online courses. Right. And they would just have access to the assessment. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that that's something that we would define by um, well, not necessarily by availability, but the administrators, whenever they're ready to assign this course, let's say you have students in a classroom and you assign the course to the students that are there, and then they log on and complete that course or the assessment, and then you know that's all they have access to. Yeah. But continue on, Dusty. Okay. So moving on to availability. Availability is where um, you're, you're probably not going to be um, setting any of this. For example, if we set self-enrollment, um, then anyone in um, a specific department would be able to self-enroll into this course. Um, we probably don't want that since it's an assessment. And we probably don't want anyone getting a sneak peek of what's in here. Mm -hmm. um, so I probably wouldn't... Um, you probably wouldn't take advantage of much of this. Um, if you want to, um, for department visibility, since we only want um, the administrators at um, in your department to be able to view this, we would set this to, um, to you. There are different things that you would see if you're logged in as an administrator. I'm logged in as my level of administration so you're pretty much seeing a lot of um, stuff that you wouldn't see mm -hmm. but um, yeah you would be listed as an administrator so any administrators in this department are going to be able to um, administer this assessment um, completion we have um, post enrollments Post enrollments might be something that you use. So for example, if you have a training program and after a user completes this, we may say that, okay, uh, whenever they complete, maybe two days after uh, they receive um, certain courses automatically assigned to them. I don't know if that's something that you would use, but it is something to think about. Yeah, we wouldn't use that right away, but it's something we could move towards. Allow re-enrollment is going to allow a user to re-enroll into a course. Um, since this is an assessment, I probably wouldn't recommend doing that. Uh, messages are going to um, send a message out to the user whenever this has been assigned, and also whenever it's been completed. Um, you can turn these off. So if, there, for example, you only want an enrollment email sent, you can leave this selected. If you don't want any email sent 
and then you just um, turn off the emails. Okay. Um, resources would be any type of attachment, such as a PDF. Um, uploads are going to be um, any type of documentation that the user would have. I, I don't think you're going to use any of these. I have over 3,000 users in the system and none of them use uploads. Um, more, if you wanted to add a terms and conditions to this, so um, just to give you an example, we have some courses that have CEHs associated with them. And there's a confirmation that says, okay, you, by clicking this, clicking okay, you, confirm that you are the actual person logged in and taking this course or something to that effect. So um, that is terms and conditions. If you want users to be able to take this on a mobile device, then you um, click enable for mobile app. And if you want to enable an evaluation, this is our standard evaluation, and you can go in and you can edit these questions. So if you only wanted, um, let's say, maybe a two question evaluation, and you could edit this and change what the question is and change whether this is a rating or text, then a user would have the opportunity to leave an evaluation. And you can also define whether or not this is required So I'm going to save this. Do we have any questions before I back out of this? Not yet. <clears throat> no. And I'm going to change the availability to um, to Martech and myself, so I can assign it to myself. So if I pull up the assessment. Click Enroll User. I'm going to enroll myself into this. My assessment's assigned right here. I can start the course and click start. And there's my message, welcome to the assessment, proceed. And so these were randomized. So I'm going to have these in randomized, um, a randomized manner. And that did show that I did get it correct. There's my response. I'm going to get this wrong. And this does show the uh, what the correct response should have been. And we'll submit the exam. And it says I scored a 75 and um, I passed. And you see there's a little timer up here and it took me less than a minute. It says I have completed 100% of this course. That means there's no assessment at the end or I'm sorry, not an assessment, but there's not an evaluation. So if you did have an evaluation that was required at the end of this test, it would say you have completed 50% of this course. And then they would proceed to the evaluation and then they will have completed 100% of the um, assessment. So if I um, log off and I'm going to log back in as the administrator,
If I go to my reports, my assessment report, and I'm going to search for my assessment. And select the assessment. Sorry, I have Mark responding to me about my question. That's okay. You can tell him yes. There would be okay, 300 saw users. That. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be 300 users with assessment access only, or more. Well, yeah, 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 or more. So this is our report on the. Yes, this is a report. So if I select the, um, if I select the test, I can see how many attempts there are, how many people passed, how many people failed, and what the average score is, and the average amount of time that's spent in the test. So if I view the summary report, I have a few different options. I'm going to look at the summary summary report first. And so this is giving me the, um, it's summarizing the questions and what the average response is. So if you have uh, different users taking this, then you're going to have different data. Or if the more users you have, the, the more different this data is going to get. And look at the assessment activity. And I can click on uh, the user and go to the answers report. And I can view what, um, what they answered and whether or not they got it correct or incorrect. What do you think? I think that's great. Where's the report of everybody's scores? Everyone's scores that should be So if you go to the, um, I think it's the course summary report. Actually, course activity report, and we search for test assessment. And this is going to give me um, all the users and all their um, completed information ah, and what great. they stored. Excellent. Um, one, one other thing I want to show I was thinking there was a way you could add assessments outside of that um, tool. Oh, question banks. So if you want to go ahead and build your questions, um, you can add questions to a question bank. And this is showing a lot of questions that um, have already been entered. I don't. Let me log in as my other user and see if that has admin rights.
Mark says he needs to check the contract. Mm -hmm. And he said it might be around $35 a user, but he's looking to see if he can get something cheaper. Very good. So I'll have him reach out to y'all. So whenever you log in, I'm not sure if you're going to see questions in this question bank or if it's something that I'm seeing because I'm a high level admin. Um, but to create a question bank, just click add new question bank and then you can name the bank. Then start creating your questions just the same as we did uh, before. And then whenever you're building your um, whenever you're building your assessment course, you'll have an option whenever you're populating the assessment. If you go to questions, um, you can click use question bank and it will, um, you can select the question bank that you want to use and it will populate the questions from that bank. <laughs> Pretty simple. I think so. And you said you recorded this? Yes, this is being recorded. Okay. We'll have to go through that process a couple of times as far as building the assessment. So before we get it absolutely right. Dustin. Yeah, my, my experience, um, can you see this spreadsheet? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Usually what I do is um, trying to, I can't get my bar here. Anyway, if I, okay, there we go. So just creating a spreadsheet um, that'll have all of your questions and answers um, together. I think this is probably going to be the e easiest thing. And, um, and it also lets you look at your questions at a glance and it makes it much quicker if you're copying and pasting into the, um, into the assessment tool. And usually whenever I build something, I make all of the um, correct responses in one row. And then if you, whenever you are building um, the exam or whenever you're building the assessment, if you choose the option to um, randomize answer order and randomize question order, um, the system's going to automatically randomize those. So you don't have to worry about A being the correct response with every question. Make sense? Yeah, I think so. And if you wanted to add feedback, then I'd probably add a column to uh, feedback as well, or for feedback as well into your spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. right. 
And I'm actually going to um, take this test and I'm going to assign it to um, your department. So you'll be able to use it for reference. So any administrator in your department should be able to see this in your available course listing. Cool. So if there aren't any other questions, I'll go ahead and end the call and then I'll post this um, to YouTube and send a link um, once it's been posted. Very good, very good. Sounds great. All right, and uh, Mark will be in touch with you in regards to pricing. Perfect, I appreciate that. Thank you. All right.